Symbols, pieces of visual imagery which carry with them a certain idea or emotion. Examples include logos, emojis, poses, flowers, characters, even colors. As long as the imagery conveys a specific meaning, that can make it a symbol. But symbols don't always keep the same meaning. Much like with a language, symbols can slowly evolve based on the changes in the context we see them. But they can also be adopted by a group of people and used as their symbol. If their use of the symbol is powerful enough, it can completely change the way we see that piece of imagery. This brings me to the first of three symbols I would like to discuss with you. The swastika, a symbol we often associate with anti-Semitism and recognize widely as a symbol of hate. However, this hasn't always been the case. For most of the symbol's history was actually used to represent good luck. In fact, the name swastika comes from a very similar Sanskrit word meaning good fortune or well-being. The symbol has been used within Eurasia as early as 7,000 years ago, but was discovered by Germans when the archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann found the symbol in an ancient site of Troy. Him, as well as other European scholars, then began to speculate and link it to a sense of shared Aryan culture. Then, in 1920, the symbol was adopted by the Nazi party. To many Germans, the symbol was one of great national and Aryan pride, but to those faced against the flag, it was one of horror and oppression. Nowadays, the symbol's main meaning has taken on that of hate, at least within the US. When someone sees the symbol, even in a religious context, the first thing that comes to mind is the swastika, for me at least. The symbol within our society is now incredibly taboo. Taboo to the point where I decided not even to show the image within this project. The swastika, after starting as a symbol of good fortune, was taken out of context and adopted to one of hate. Because of how powerful the Nazis portrayed their message through hate and violence, the common meaning of the symbol completely changed. I find this concept of change in a symbol's meaning to be incredibly interesting, and the idea of the swastika is what made me want to learn more about this in the first place. I wanted to know, has something similar happened with other symbols? Well, it turns out that it has. Please turn your view to the Eye of Providence, the all-seeing eye, or the symbol of the Illuminati. When people see this eye, they usually say, oh yeah, that's the Illuminati, or something along those lines. But do you know where this symbol really comes from? Much like with the swastika, it was actually a religious symbol. The Eye of Providence started out as a Christian symbol in Renaissance art used to represent God. However, this Christian symbol does stem from many other, much older religious symbols. Over time, the symbol has been used in many different ways, usually meant to represent either being watched over or to represent God. One such use of this symbol is the United States Seal. The seal contains a pyramid with 13 layers representing the 13 original colonies with an eye on top, which is meant to represent God's sympathetic oversight over this fledgling nation. So you may be thinking, great, now I know why the US seal is a pyramid and an eye, but has that have to do with the Illuminati? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, the Illuminati was a secret society founded in Bavaria in 1776 and was disbanded in 1787. The group was inspired behind the ideas of Freemasonry, another secretive religious group which is right in the middle of many conspiracy theories. The Freemasons had also used this symbol following the lead of many other churches at the time. The question is, how do we get from here to where the symbol is now? Well, that has to do with conspiracy theorists and misinterpretation. You see, when theorists see this symbol being used all over the world, see that it's used by the Freemasons, the secret of Illuminati, and the US government, it's easy to think that it's all connected. It's easy for these theorists to say that the US is controlled by a secretive group called the Illuminati that uses the eye and pyramid as their symbol. What's interesting about this symbol is that unlike the swastika, the eye's many uses were misinterpreted and falsely connected into one large web, while with the swastika, what changed the symbol's meaning was an overpowering use of the meaning. The last symbol I would like to tell you about is a bit different from the other two symbols I mentioned, because this symbol is a meme. A piece of internet culture that spreads through relatability and survival of the fittest. I would like to talk about Pepe the Frog. Pepe the Frog is a cartoon character created by Matt Fury. The character's first appearance was in a comic called Playtime. After Playtime, more characters were added and it became Boys Club. It was a humorous comic about post-college life, with the type of humor that basement-dwelling neats would relate to. However, the characters are a bit deeper, as they are all based on aspects of Matt's own personality, which makes what happens next incredibly sad. It all started out with a frame of Pepe peeing, with his pants down, followed by him saying, Feels good, man. From there, the quote and character began evolving into a meme. For context, what a meme is, is cultural evolution. Throughout the internet, there is plenty of content, and when someone sees something they like or relate to, they replicate it, but in their own way. What this does is it brings a meme forward in its evolution. However, much like the real world, only the strongest survive. If someone changes a meme in a way people don't like, 
it'll have no effect. But if the meme can grab onto enough people's attention, then the meme has evolved, its meaning or intention changed. This brings me to 4chan, often called the abyss, bottomless pit, or sphincter of the internet. In 4chan, posts are brought to everyone's front page based on the number of responses that they get, whether those are good or bad. This makes 4chan a rapid breeding ground for new memes, as it was designed with this idea of survival of the fittest in mind. Sadly though, as I said, bad responses give the posts attention too. Because of this, 4chan is like a competition for people's attention, where everyone says the most horrible or fucked up things because those are what get the most responses. Regrettably, as I said, Pepe is the type of thing that basement dwelling 4chan needs relate to. The meme melted into the culture of 4chan, and the Pepe Sag face is now the most iconic symbol within 4chan. The Sad face, along with Wojak, a similar internet character, were used to express the sorrow and depression of the people within the internet. I think a lot of people simply find it hard to express emotion when so much of their life is either a monotonous job and or dwelling within the depths of 4chan. Creating sorrowful and relatable memes gave them a place to express that emotion. Over time, as Pepe became much bigger and there was quote unquote normie Pepe usage, it enraged a lot of the 4chan population who used it as a symbol to represent themselves. It's kind of interesting because initially it was a symbol to represent Matt, then it was taken to represent 4chan, and then it was taken again by the rest of the internet. Where will it stop? Not here, I can tell you that much. As a way to combat this normie usage, people began trying to be as grossly offensive with Pepe as they could be. After all, much like with the swastika, people will be scared to use it after its meaning changed to one of horror. In fact, there were many memes of Pepe with swastikas. Pepe's usage changed to one of innocence crossed with evil. This spiraled out of control to a crazy extent with Elliot Roger, a 22-year-old who was shot and killed seven people. He was very much divorced from reality, and when 4chan found out that he was one of them, they began using him as a symbol for their incel rage alongside Pepe. Pepe from here became a real symbol of violence. It doesn't end just here, though. This may seem like an odd shift, but as Donald Trump's candidacy as president began, many 4chaners saw similarities between themselves and him. Many began to create photos of Pepe that looked like Donald Trump. In fact, at a certain point, Trump even retweeted one such image. Now let's imagine for a second that you associate yourself with an image, and then a big figure who may be about to lead you also uses that image. Wouldn't you then start to agree and align yourself with that figure? After all, if the Eye of Providence has taught us anything, it's that creating an association between the use of a symbol in multiple places can lead to a real change in how you see the world. Well, anyways, that's what happened. At this point, these four drivers really wanted Trump to be president. A couple times at speeches, people shouted out, PEPE, into the audience. This sort of established a real world existence between these 4chaners amongst each other. They were all real and they could all affect the real world. To everyone else, they began to see Pepe as a real world symbol as well, representing white supremacy and of the alt-right. As Pepe was adopted by the alt-right and brought into the real world, so was a bit of 4chan as well. Much like with 4chan, where you could say any horrible thing you wanted and pretend you were kidding, Pepe allowed people to say whatever they wanted and just act like they were kidding. At a certain point, Hillary Clinton released an article explaining that Pepe is a hate symbol. The thing is, to 4chan, this was delightful. To see Hillary Clinton denouncing a frog looked ridiculous. But to see her associate the frog with the alt-right and deem it as a hate symbol really solidified it as such. In fact, at this point, Pepe was added to the US database of hate symbols. Matt Fury, the creator, saw this, and he was very sad. He actually wanted he actually started a campaign to try and save Pepe, where people would make their own picture of Pepe and post it with the hashtag, hashtag save Pepe. It was super wholesome and a ton of people helped out. It didn't work very well though. Within the US, there isn't an easy way to change how a symbol of hate is seen. In the culture of symbols, the only way to change a symbol is by being more drastic than it, by having a more powerful message. But a symbol of hatred is sort of the most powerful message you can have. However, I would like to say that later on, out of nowhere, Pepe was being used as a symbol for democracy in Hong Kong protests against China. We need to remember that we all see the world differently. When someone isn't impacted by all the politics of one world, they can completely change the context that we see an image. If there's a lesson we can all take away from this, I'd like to say it's this. Modern social media is an evil abyss of hatred. It's a place devoid of shame. It's a place that filters media to us simply based on the scale of our reactions. It can warp our views and spread biased information. It strategically makes use of our susceptibilities to addict us and extremify our views of the world. It turns us against each other and it creates a battlefield of hatred that can and has leaked into the real world as well. <laughs> that was a bit somber. Anyways, to cap off the idea of changing symbols, let me say this. Symbols are pieces of visual imagery that portray an idea or emotion. The thing is, symbols change. Nothing stays the same forever. Symbols evolve. Their meanings change. Different people adopt them. Some people go too far with them. Depending on how far they go, we might never be able to take that symbol back. That's why knowing all this information is so important. 
If you know the info, you won't mistake a windmill for a symbol of Aryan pride. If you know all the info, you won't make connections that aren't there. And if the internet wasn't such a fucked up place, maybe we'd all be a little better informed. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.